and his vast knowledge on coconut vertebrate pets will be shared to the students now you can have a very nice lecture dr emmanuel sir now you can start your session on vertebrate pets and their management in coconut thank you Can I audible? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So, good evening, students, and good evening, uh, respect to the uh, university officers, uh, Mr. Chancellor, sir, AD, madam, and my fellow. Sir, you should be a little bit louder, Emmanuel, sir. Oh. Okay. Little bit so, louder. So, so I'm so glad uh, that we are dealing with the coconut, and you have been. Uh, listening to this uh, production protection technologies of coconut uh, since uh, the weeks but uh, we have been going through a lot of uh, uh, advancements in coconuts but most of the crop production and protection uh, aspects have been covered but the coconuts uh, are so valuable uh, it's been uh, called as kalpa riksha because every part of coconut is uh, being used for the profit of the farmers but we know that the nuts are so vulnerable because uh, uh, nuts, uh, coconut trees are so tall, uh, coconut trees are tall, but the uh, pest can reach there. Uh, maybe we cannot reach the coconut uh, uh, crown, or uh, cannot reach the nuts, uh, because trees are so tall, but the pest can reach. But the pest can go to the top and they can damage the nuts. So one such important pest that can reach the nuts is the rodents. So among the rodents, the important the important rodent pest is the rats. Okay, so rat uh, what we call as the the roof rat, the ratus ratus. So we know so many kinds of rats are there among the rodents. You know, the important pests of rodents. We know these important pests called as the bandicoot bengalensis. So this bandicoot bengalensis is a big size uh, uh, bandic uh, rat, or, or we call as the bandicoot, uh, which is found in you know, all the sea ranges. Which is found in rice uh, paddy fields. So we don't find these bandicoots in um, a coconut ecosystem. So in the coconut ecosystem, you find the ratus ratus, so which is called as the uh, roof rat. So they will go, they will climb, and they will reach the uh, crown, and they will uh, search the tender nuts, also the mature nuts, and because they have a long, sharp incisors, so they will gnaw these particular uh, nuts, and they will go through. And they will uh, try to damage the entire nuts. So uh, these nuts, uh, uh, they cannot be used again. So they cannot be marketable. So the moment they start feeding, the nuts will fall down, and uh, that's the important sign. Like you know, these nuts are uh, damaged. So you you see round uh, gold holes you now of each nuts. So in the particular day, all the nuts have fallen down, and you know that these rats are very much uh, present over there. So uh, as we know, this uh, various uh, 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 intercrops are grown like when coconut and cocoa is grown. Coconut is, is almost like 20, 20 meters, 20 feet tall, and the, uh, the cocoa is, is partially shade grown crop. So, you find this particular pest, uh, rats are damaging both the cocoa plants as well as the coconuts. So, this is a common pest. So, when you have this uh, uh, intercrop, suppose you are having intercrops of oil palm and cocoa. So this becomes a common pest. So this becomes a common pest of uh, uh, cocoa and uh, uh, coconut or oil palm or a cocoa. So these rats, not because they like the taste of all these, uh, uh, they like the taste, but they, they like the uh, the way they, they gnaw or, or they scratch this particular uh, nuts because they have got a long, sharp incisor. So, so we will deal for the next, uh, uh, Forty minutes or so, and then we'll go for a question and answer session. So, so we will see how many kinds of uh, rodents are there, and which is the most dangerous rodent that will go and cause a lot of damage to the this particular uh, uh, coconut and these intercrops, and how to manage them. So, uh, I'll share the screen, right? Thank you. 
आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है हेलो सर क्या आवाज मिल पा रही है मेरी ओके आई ट्राई टू स्पीक लाउड आई गॉट अ कमेंट दैट द वॉइस इज नॉट लाउड जस्ट होल्ड ऑन जस्ट होल्ड ऑन Okay, so I try to share the screen now. Am I audible now? Hello. Sir, audible, sir. Okay. So uh, the topic uh, given today is vertebrate pests and their management in coconut. See, uh, why we talk about coconut? You know, it talks about all the uh, intercrops as well. So, intercrops include, you know, it could be uh, cocoa or, or it could be coconut and the cocoa or oil palm and the cocoa. But you see, all these particular uh, pests among the vertebrate pests, we see rats are the most uh, ravaging and the damaging pests. So, can you see this picture here? If you see picture, you know, the rats they, they like, you know. Destroying or disrupting or gnawing these particular wires. So these wires, they they get so fascinated towards colors and you know because they uh, they keep gnawing these particular uh, wires. And you can see this picture. You can see the picture in the screen. A car getting you know. So you can you can see whether you know. Full screen. Yeah, please hold on. Okay. So you can see this particular picture, like you know, where the rodents are damaging the wires, and you can see this is how the rodents are ravaging the urban uh, scenario. But uh, when you talk about agricultural pests, you know, agricultural pests like uh, agricultural crops, uh, while most of the time you see uh, rats are the major crop in most of the uh, uh, crops like paddy, wet gram, uh, other vegetable crops. So I want you to take to uh, uh, yeah. So what are rodents especially? Rodents means uh, these uh, you have a varied uh, animals like rats, mice, gerbils, mole rats, porcupines, uh, uh, squirrels, uh, and marmot, etc., etc. So you can see a wide range of animals coming, uh, vertebrate animals coming in this picture. But the most important is the rats. So you can see some pictures on the top 
on the right you can see this uh, bandicoot and down below you can see this is the you know the rattles rattles the rattles norvegicus and these are small mouse mus musculus So this is a gerbil. You can see in the top, a small gerbil. These gerbils are almost like the mouse, but uh, they are not exactly mouse, but they also cause the lot of damage. You can see this is a five-striped uh, 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 squirrels. So squirrels are also major damage causing in the horticultural ecosystems. And you can see a porcupine, and these are the mole rats. So mole rats, you can see, you know, they have a long incisors growing. Uh, So the taxonomic uh, uh, importance, so they belong to the class Mammalia, the order Rodentia, and the body is covered with hairs, and they have got two distinct sexes, and they give birth to uh, young ones. And these are characterized by presence of one pair of chisel-shaped, ever-growing teeth. You can see the picture down. They've got a chisel-shaped, ever-growing teeth. So if you want to write down, you can take some points. So why these rats, they, they, they ignore, uh, they, they keep you know, moving towards hard surface is because uh, their teeth starts growing, you know, unending, unending. So uh, because they, they want to drop these particular teeth and when these uh, lower teeth start, you know, uh, uh, in alignment with the upper teeth, so uh, it gets disturbed. It cannot chew the food properly. So it has to rub. It has to rub both these uh, uh, teeth to even level so that it can close its mouth. So in order to close its mouth, so it has to go and rub its, its teeth or incisors to a hard surface. So it likes hard surface like nuts. It, go, it, it goes and uh, hard surface on the wood. So the, it, it keeps you know, gnawing or it keeps rubbing its particular teeth and it causes a, a irreparable damage to us. You can see most of the, uh, uh, the short circuits, what you see in apartments, short circuits, what you see in cars or moving trains, short circuits, what you see in a moving buses. Uh, sometime back, we have seen most of the Volvo buses you know, on, on road while driving, you know, when the bus is on run, uh, you might have seen that those buses are catching fire. Something, sometimes you might have seen, you know, in a, in a train, a moving train is catching a fire. It's all because of how these rats, they move and they gnaw uh, and they cause a lot of damage. So uh, they, uh, they were classified as rodents, you know, uh, since because the teeth and the upper jaw. So these are more successful animals <clears throat> among a lot of animals were successful. Uh, they are successful. These were successful. Uh, and uh, they found one fourth of the families and 36% of genera in the Mammalia in the class mammal. So, so they were included in the class mammal. So most of the drugs, most of the drugs what uh, we are consuming, they has to be uh, tested among the rats because rats belong to the same mammals like us. So whatever chemical is working on rats will also work on humans as well. So rats are very dangerous uh, uh, pests. We call them pests, but when we see them moving in our house, you know, in our surroundings, we take it so lightly. So we take it so lightly, but we have to take utmost care on the rat population. So let's see. Right. So why rats are so successful? Because they have got well-developed smell. They have well-developed, you know, sense of touch. And they have well developed sense of fear also. Suppose you now most of the rats are nocturnal because when you sleep, when we go to sleep, they simply move and they see where you are and they can smell. They can smell from long distance also. What kind of uh, uh, non vegetarian you're cooking at home, or what is the food, or sugar products, or bakery products, or whatever. Fruits. So it can smell, it can smell uh, at a very uh, long range. And they are very secretive, so they don't move 
down. They don't. Uh, they are not seen on day times. And, and the most uh, interesting is they are sometimes you know they color blind, and uh, they can distinguish shades. They use fixed runways. So uh, you might have seen you know, some of the PVC pipes. You know they'll be having brown color luster. So these brown color luster nothing but their runways. Sometimes you might have seen their you know, markings. What we call as markings. Uh, on the windows, markings on the on the ways, uh, you know, you might have seen. Uh, they usually go a burrowing method of habitat. You know, they simply burrow the uh, buns and they live inside and they breed inside, and they cannot vomit. That's why scientists, you know, they have taken this uh, 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 this habit as one method of controlling these rats. They cannot vomit outside. And they're not, as I say, and they're wormy ones. They, they feed on fruits, they feed on grains, they feed on meat. You know, they can feed on any range of you know uh, of food stuff. So they are, and again, they're very good climbers and swimmers as well. They can climb coconut, they can climb you know arikana, they can climb uh, uh, in oil palm. So oil palm is very tough surface, but even then they can climb. So very good. Uh, they can stress surface and they. Uh, auto reabsorption of embryos. They have uh, super fetation, migration, hoarding, and etc. and etc. So this makes rats as highly. They make rats as highly adaptable or very successful animal in the uh, uh, globe Earth. So what are what are the factors that that make rats so dominant? Number one is availability of food. Suppose we are we are not uh, making the food disposable um, uh, properly. Suppose our, our coconut fields are in and around the house, right? So most of the times the coconut fields are much away from the house source. But this food is uh, something that attracts, because I said earlier, they got very strong sense of smell and the availability of water, the availability of shelter, uh, and the presence of major channels. If you see the paddy uh, crop, you know, they tend to have a lot of channels, in my color, you know? then gardens, coconut shells, all these are the favorable conditions for them to breed. So rats are wonderful. They breed so fast. And decline of predatory populations. So because see, earlier in, uh, in, when I was a kid, when I was a child, I used to find these cats in, in everywhere. Uh, but now I don't see cats in large numbers. So we all know the famous uh, uh, story of Tom and Jerry. So now we see a lot of rats and less of cats population. So decline in predatory population and indiscriminate of pesticides and all, they have led to this uh, uh, predatory population less. And lack of community approach while adopting. See, it's not like you, know, you can control your own coconut field. Suppose you have one acre or two acres, so you think that you can control them. It's not possible. The only reason because these are migratory. They migrate from one place to one. They migrate from, you know, even from village to village also, they can migrate in the border levels. Again, everything depends upon the availability of food, shelter, and the accurate place for breeding. So, and the climate also. So you need to think, because uh, we know that our Indian uh, climates are tropical and subtropical, which is highly conducive for reproduction and population explosion. Okay, so when you come when you compare the rodent population, the rat population of India and Russia, so India and Scandinavian countries, okay, okay, then you can see the population. Even there, you can see a lot of population, but in India, you see the population is much more than you compare to other populations. So the, the ranging, the rodent damage could be from two to fifteen percent in agriculture crops, and occasionally it can arrive even increase from twenty-five percent to hundred percent damage as well. So this is uh, some of the estimates you know, we see in coconut, oil palm, and cocoon. Uh, you can see in various states. In Karnataka, you can also see the coconut, you know, the rodents, they cause root damage also. They can also cause the root damage, which is uh, something like a, a new uh, study for us, you know, uh, like Bandicoot and Bangalensis. Bandicoot and Bangalensis, they, they are not good climbers, but uh, uh, that is could go. Uh, so these... Uh, in Karnataka, there's a study. No, uh, in tendernets, also you can see the damage. In Andhra Pradesh, tendernets damage is almost 14.7%. You know, and Andamans, it is more. Andamans, because most of the uh, area is under coconut cultivation, more than any other place. So you see, ratus, 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 
So you can see rattus rattus crop damage is more in Andaman than Nicobar Island because you see a lot of because they they can even migrate from tree to tree as well. So uh, suppose you see uh, uh, the ratta, they live in a community. You don't expect rat to know. Uh, come down and go to nest tree and come down and go. No, it's not like this. They jump from one tree to other on the top of the canopy. So that's why you see larger the area, larger the infestation. So Andaman, because it's, it's an island, so the damage is more found in Andaman. So even an oil palm, the crop, oil crop, oil palm, you can see maximum uh, damage is found in Andaman. It is found in tender and ripe food around 57%. In Kerala, Kerala, you see in seedlings. In seedlings, you see damage around 45%. In cocoa, uh, it's in parts. It's in parts. The damage is found in the lower end of the pod. The damage is higher in Tamil Nadu. So you can see all these particular population, like Bandicoota, Bengalensis, or Rattans, Rattans, you know, all these, you can see them feeding on. So this is one uh, study. So how you can see the various uh, damage uh, percentage So we have seen with respect to the cocoa. The cocoa we have seen coconut five to ten percent, cocoa eight to fifty one percent. We see much damage of uh, much damage of rodents is uh, is found in cocoa crop. Much damage is found in cocoa around fifty one percent because these spots are spots are so sensitive, so they can be in vegetables around 10 percent only. So. So I was uh, uh, talking to you about the incisor. So you can see the ever-growing incisor tree. So per day, you can see the growth rate is about 0.4 mm per day. So you can see these incisors are growing. So it's ever-growing. And this one, you can see the lower one is growing much faster than the top one. And, and, the, and, the, and they, they need you know, some hard surface to grow. They need some hard growth so that they, they will uh, maintain this particular lower and upper at equal level. Otherwise, you know, they, they keep crossing each other and it causes a so annoying for the rats. Mm -hmm. So, so one big advantage for rats for the population explosion. What we say population explosion is because of the rodent uh, breeding. The lifespan is about each rat is about one to two years. It, it, it attains puberty by six to 16 weeks and the duration of heat is about 9 to 24 hours and gestation period is just 22 days you can just remember why the rats are so dangerous because gestation is about 22 days and breeding season is around the year about, about five to six times in a year they, they, you can see you'll find them offspring uh, and the little size is 1 to 22 at one single birth you can see 22 uh, offsprings coming up so this is the breeding potential is 800 to 1,400 feet per year. So this is highly dangerous, and that's why you can see rat population at high alarming rate. So you can see K pattern or R pattern of breeding, normal breeding and abnormal breeding. And abnormal breeding, you say uh, the litter size is about 12 to 20, 12 to 20. But normal breeding at one single go, you'll have around six uh, offsprings. Uh, Per, yeah. So, out of the most of the rats, you know, damaging this particular on coconut or the cocoa crop, these are rattus rattus. And you can see these rattus rattus, uh, uh, why, um, yeah, these rattus rattus, they are slender, medium sized bodies, tail is longer than the head body length, pointed snout, large and prominent ears, bean shaped. Right, bean shaped pellets and adult weight is about 150 grams. So, this is also called as the roof rat, huh? okay, because it, 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 it's a climbing rat. 
you can see you can you can the, the first look you can see this rat is black in color jet black in color and, and you can see the ears are much bigger the most important prominent is the tail the tail is much longer than the body the tail is much longer longer in the slender medium sized body tail is longer than the head body length okay so this is one good indication of this particular rattus rattus and it has got a pointed snout and bean shaped pellets pellets mean its fecal pellets the fecal pellets are bean shaped okay and adapt which is about 150 pounds and the other uh, uh, rodent which is highly damaging our cocoa crop is the uh, uh, squirrels so these squirrels you know that is a bushy tail which equals to head body length it's got a bushy tail and dorsum the dorsum the, the, the dorsum is brownish gray with five whitish stripes somebody raise hands uh, am i audible madhraka chandni uh, should i proceed is my voice audible uh, yes sir your voice is audible sir you can proceed uh, thank you so uh, how do you distinguish this particular uh, uh, squirrel than others it is all about the stripes uh, the tail is bushy uh, uh, and then you can see that the the which is equal to the body length the, the tail is equal to the body length the dorsum is brownish gray with five white stripes that's why it's called as a five stripe squirrel as well it is also called as five stripe squirrel so this is found in uh, almost all parts of india right from sikkim to you know south india west bengal and these are diurnal you can see in the daylight see the only difference between squirrel and rat is because squirrel is found in day daylight they are diurnal whereas rats are nocturnal so uh, they are distant to horticulture crops being omnivores they eat insects larvae beetles and breed throughout the year the gestation period is about 40 to 40 days and little size will vary from 1 to 5 so uh, when we talk about the economic importance you know the dominant just a top dominant species being uh, the rattus rattus and the bandicoot rat and the uh, funambulus penanti that is the northern palm squirrel uh, the nature so how they cause damage so now we have seen uh, out of all this uh, rodents out of all the rodents like rats and mouse and gerbils and porcupines and uh, and all out of all these we have seen three or two are the most extensive damage into coconut and the uh, intercrops so that how you see you know you see them because uh, you see them cutting cutting this is particular to horticulture crops and other agriculture crops also you see them cutting you know because uh, and uh, causing damage how do you see diagnosis so how to differentiate a mouse and the roof rat uh, droppings so if you see the roof rat or the rattus rattus the points are ended you see the ended points the average length of this pellet is about half an inch half an inch is a long uh, uh, point but if you see the mouse because size is the, the size of mouse is much smaller than the roof rat that's rattus rattus and the it has got a pointed ends can you see it has got pointed ends but the size is much smaller it is about 1 by 4 inch so how do you know that this particular uh, coconut coconut or cocoa uh, intercrop is vulnerable or already there is a infestation number one you can see in the top picture you can see a small rat is trying to protrude the uh, burrow so this is called live burrow so there is difference between live burrow and dead burrow uh, when they call it as live burrow live burrow means when a rat or a rodent is present inside a particular burrow we call it as a live burrow all right so when we see that's the first indication the first indication is you see burrows are there in and around the coconut or in the barns uh, then you should uh, think then then you should come to conclusion that rats are present inside then you can see the nuts are fallen like this the coconuts are fallen uh, uh, with a hole and, and and you can also estimate the you know at what age these particular nuts are fallen so you can see you know the nuts are about 12 months old okay 12 months tender tender nuts means around for 6 months Uh, less than six months or seven months nuts we call them tender nuts. Okay, then the fiber starts you know growing inside the nut and and eleventh month or or tenth month the farmers will harvest them. So naturally the coconut is falling in twelfth month we call it as completely mature nut. So when does you know we see a prime uh, uh, damaging nuts means 
is around sixth and seventh nut month. And uh, nut, when you see the shell is much uh, tender. Okay, shell is much tender, and you see uh, the the, uh, coconut, the water in the meat is also very tender. You can see all these nuts, nuts are tender nuts. So the most vulnerable stage, what you can estimate is from the six months onwards. You know, you can see the uh, nuts are highly damaged. You don't see, you know, uh, this damage mature nuts now when they are eleventh month or so. Uh, but uh, the tender nuts are highly vulnerable. You can also notice, you know, uh, the footprints, the footprints of rats, okay, on the ponds or the suppose uh, on the mud or the clay. So uh, on the basis of footprints, on the basis of the fecal pellets, on the basis of the fallen nuts, or on the basis of the burrows. So you can have an estimate, you know, that you know, there could be a possible uh, uh, flare up of this particular rodent damage. So you have to be uh, devising your methodology now how to control them. Yes. So now, yeah, hello. So uh, signs of damage, especially on the ceilings. So, so you can have a signs of uh, damage in the ceilings as well as on the nuts also. The gnawed holes made on the base of the ceilings. Suppose the ceilings are there, you know. So we try to uh, transplant them after one year. Sometimes you can also transfer one up here. So uh, in the nursery also you can see, uh, or if, till the stem uh, the, it gets the base gets stronger. So you can see these knot holes are found on the base of the seedlings also. So these holes are uh, they even cause the predisposing factors for the other pathogens to enter and cause considerable damage. So irregular knot holes on the perianth lobe or immature nut is also found. So premature nut fall. The premature nut fall is also one uh, symptom of this particular damage. So you can see the nuts. You can see the tail. The tail is much longer than the head and the body length. I'm just trying to show to the pointer. Can you see the pointer? Hello. Yeah. So you can see the pointer here. Uh, the tail is much longer, and this is. The and this you can see the cocoa pod, uh, the cocoa pod, you can see damage, the damage is at the lower end. So whereas the, if the squirrel damages, you can see squirrel damage is almost near the, uh, the pedestal, this point. So this is the, the dead one, which is the, the root ratus, ratus. So now, you know, after discussing about the importance of rats and how rats cause a lot of damage and how you can understand the presence of rat based on the fecal pellets, presence of rats based on the active burrows, the presence of rats based on its footprints or their fallen nuts. Now we have to uh, devise, uh, we have to design a particular uh, IPM uh, methodology. You cannot control uh, rats by one single method called as you know, chemicals or one such thing. So what people suggest is across by FAO. So what they say is the IPM through area-wide management. IPM through area-wide management. Mm -hmm. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, I need to check in the middle once again. So. Uh, what I call it as the area-wide management. You cannot control rats in a particular area. Say like you cannot control rats in a, uh, say like A, B, C. You cannot control in uh, isolation because rats are, what I said, they're migratory. They migrate from one particular field to another particular field. So again, I said the predisposing factors for rat to migrate is because of abundance of food. Next is uh, spillage of food. Suppose you have a lot of uh, uh, the, the, the garbage is piled up. The garbage is piled up in a village in a particular area. Then you are, you are bound to uh, understand that suddenly you'll have a rat infestation there. So now I'll come to one by one area how to control rats. The rats are migratory. Rats can think. They're clever. They're intelligent. They can swim. They can climb. They have a high sense of smell. They have high sense of you know sight. So. Managing rat is a, a billion or billion dollar project. So it is not so simple like controlling a beetle or controlling a lepidopteran insect or controlling a white fly. The controlling insect is much easier. 
but controlling rats is very difficult because you know, they can run, they can, uh, they can migrate so much faster. So uh, the first, just like IPM of insect pests, we also have IPM of erodents, like cultural, mechanical, chemical, and other aspects as well. So under cultural, I, I say the first thing is harbor rate reduction. Harbor rate reduction. This, this is not found in insect pest management. So insect pest management, this uh, uh, point doesn't come. It doesn't arise. So whereas in rodent management, what we call it as harbor rate reduction. Suppose in your hostels or in your home or apartments, you're not clearing the uh, uh, garbage for regular times. Suppose the garbage disposable, it happens once in a week or once in three or four days. So slowly, slowly you'll see the insects or the rats coming up. So first thing what you have to see is you have to reduce all the garbages. You have to reduce all the food disposals. You have to reduce all the, uh, you have to, in the other way, you should see that the garbage disposable is done at regular intervals. So, uh, and then the food source reduction. You need to cut all the food source. Suppose uh, uh, somebody, you know, people will be having this, uh, they have a habit of having parties, you know, in and around the uh, orchards and all and then they leave, then the foodstuffs, or, or, or they throw the entire village dump in and around the coconut area. So this is very important, food source reduction. You need to cut all the uh, spillage, you have to cut all the, you have to uh, drain out all these particular uh, uh, garbages. And then immigration reduction. What is immigration reduction? Because this particular insect, they migrate from one place to one place. So always, next point is, the barriers, you need to construct a barrier. So I'll show pictures like how to construct barriers in, in a tree cell, then repellents. So you have a lot of uh, repellents, like chemical-based repellents, or, uh, or you have audio-based repellents, you have a, a beating type of uh, repellents. And then, just like agriculture, what we say is crop rotation. You suppose you have this particular, uh, this doesn't have uh, applicable for coconut because they are perennial plants, but tillage around the plant base, around tree base, you need to till. So this will help the rodent controls. Culture mechanical, it includes hunting, killing, and trapping. So this is something you know, like a Tom and Jerry business. You have to hunt, you have to kill, and you have to trap. So this is much uh, uh, laborious, but this is effective as well. So you can devise a trap. It could, it could be a snap trap, or it could be a bait trap, or it could be a uh, 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 bushy trap. So a lot of traps are available, so you can divide the trap and you can control it. The next is chemicals. Chemicals, you have uh, coagulant types and not anticoagulant types. Like uh, in coagulants, we see single and multiple dose. In single and multiple dose, we have warfarins, you know, we have bromic uh, tylones. So non anticoagulants you have uh, like, like zinc phosphorin also. People are using wide range of, you know, uh, chemical insecticides. So, so they come under they, they are used in baits only. So for controlling rodents, so these chemicals are used in baits only. So apart from these, apart from these, you know, some, in some of the countries, they are also using some chemicals to, uh, uh, to, uh, to reduce their reproductive ability. So, it doesn't, so that this particular uh, breeding you know, doesn't uh, go on a rampant. They, they don't, they, it doesn't flare up. You know? The population is not going beyond the level or the population explosion is not taking place. So some of the chemicals like tetrodiphon or flor, flomipine, so all these colchicines and glycerols. So even these are recommended at, at international level. I, I don't think we are using in coconut ecosystem now. Well, we are not using them, but uh, this is this is being done in some of the countries. So I just want to give uh, an insight of this. And then predators, like cats, mongoose, jackals, foxes, owls, hawks, kites, and snakes. Among all these, I think one thing what we can, what we, we are not doing is a rearing of cats. Uh, a rearing of cats is not a, a good hobby, a good thing in India, but in foreign countries they do. Uh, just like rearing uh, dogs, they also rear cats. So these cats, the rearing cats is not a, a hobby like thing, but uh, it is kept in mind to regulate or monitor rats only in some of the places. So cats, you can multiply cats and uh, thereby you can reduce these 
rats as well. So cultural, mechanical, chemical, reproductive inhibitors, use of reproductive inhibitors and predators. So these are the important points where it has to be kept in mind. So the general, what are the general uh, IPM measures being used for rodent management in, in Andhra Pradesh and around the places is number one, in the cultural, I said about the field sanitation and the removal of overlapping leaves. What, what I said, overlapping leaves, because I said these rats will be migrating from one tree to another, right, right above the canopy, because the leaves are overlapping like this. The spacing, the spacing could be seven to seven or eight into eight. Sometimes the farmers, you know, they also give spacing of six into six. When you go for closer spacing and, and the leaves are overlapping each other like this, and it, it becomes easy for rat to move on from one plant, one tree to another tree. So uh, removal of overlapping leaves. So this is one thing. And then banding. You can see these ladies here. You can see you can go for trunk banding of molten. Uh, uh, three to four at the base and placement of bromodilum cakes. See, bromodilum comes under anticoagulants, anticoagulants, and, and you know, just single dose, you don't have to go for multiple doses because bromodilum is not, it's not a smelly one. It doesn't smell much. As, as I told you, rats are very, very good, are very strong in sensing smell. So these particular rats, are controlled nowadays by a magic molecule called as bromodilone. Bromodilone is 0.005%. And it is available in cake form or powder form. If it is available in powder form, you can mix 1 is to 49 ratio with any good weight. You, know, you can mix in and put smelly rice or pulas or biryanis or coconut rice, or you can mix in the, the mixture, what we eat. Okay? So, uh, so it, it, will, it will get a flavor or it will get a chance to crunch. Okay, it needs uh, something like a crunchy meal. So this powder can be mixed with this particular weight in one is to 49 ratio. Suppose in the market you get uh, 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 Roban cakes. Okay, Roban cakes. So this is the concentration of 0.05%. And remaining is all wax. It's all wax. So they use for it, uh, uh, they, they use paraffin wax. In the in the paraffin wax, this particular chemical is mixed. And then these cakes are uh, put in the uh, place for that, this particular rats will eat and die. So you can also, this uh, baiting should also be done in the intercrops also, intercrops as well. Suppose the coconut is there and, and down below you have a cocoa crop. So treating coconut and neglecting cocoa, cocoa is again, in a, in a, that's a lethal combination. So what has to be ensured is you need to, you need to place this particular bait in the cocoa also. So cocoa you can keep at the base level or that it can be placed near the jar kits or if the, or the bait station could be tied to the any of the uh, branches. So uh, we'll go one by one. So number one, I said about cultural control, the weeding and clean cultivation because rats sometimes they also feed on weeds. So frequent uh, clean cultivation weeding will, because we keep spraying, uh, uh, some uh, uh, farmers they have a habit of uh, 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 placing granules around the tree trunk. So, so these granules will smell bad and these particular rats will flee away. So frequent plowing and harrowing under the coconut is one good uh, option. And as I told you earlier, hard growth reduction, you know, removal of all the uh, uh, spillage of food and here and there, and food source reduction, migration reduction, barriers, repellent, and crop rotation and spillage. So I was talking about the banding. So banding means so you can apply any kinds of band, you know, metal band around the tree trunk. You can see this person. Now he, he here you can see a plain surface tin. Okay, this is oil palm. Uh, and but whereas this particular person, he is trying to fix a, a corrugated uh, metal band, which is not plain. Okay, so yeah, metal yeah. banding is one good option where. Hello, uh, okay. Yeah, metal banding is one good option where you can. It, it acts as a barrier, it has a barrier where the rat cannot move from the lower to higher levels. And then the traps, you have a basket trap or a trap or shanman trap, it can be placed. And next is the uh, fumigation. So this is done in the rice and the coconut ecosystem, you know, where the rats, they move both the paddy, coconuts, and most of the east and west Godavari 
ecosystem. So now you see the coconuts are raised on, on the paddy field months. So uh, this is how you can uh, fumigate this particular burrows so that this particular rats will be having not been killed. So this is burrow fumigate. This is a smoke generator, and you can see rodents are suffocated and they get killed. So burrow fumigation. The mortality of rats after burrow fumigation. Yeah. So all these, you know, uh, fumigation and then uh, coming to baiting, uh, we have seen. Uh, the first generation and second generation. First generation baiting, you know, we have seen something like warfare. So now people are not using warfare because they are multiple feeds. Because rats, they have very good uh, sense of, you know, uh, uh, they can uh, differentiate various smells. So uh, you have to first give the normal bait without insecticide and then give it insecticide. Uh, you have to incorporate insecticide into that. So now we have a wonder molecule called as bromodalone. Bromodalone is a single feed. This is second generation anticoagulant. And bromodalone is available everywhere in the market. So I recommend you get the powder and you see the, the best bait and you mix it. And you can make a small sachet of 50 grams and you have to place in a, you have to place in the crown region. That I'll show the picture. So bromodalone is why it is so uh, prevalent or so uh, encouraging now because it is single dose. It's available as point. Double zero five percent pellet formulation is available in the powder formulation. It is available also in the wax blocks. So it is actually acts by depressing the hepatic vitamin K dependent synthesis of substance essentially blood clotting. So the moment the vitamin K is depleted, so uh, bromodiline causes vitamin K depletion. The moment vitamin K is depleted, the entire blood gets clotted. So usually the blood clotting is done. Uh, and this is oral, as I said earlier, why only this particular uh, chemical is recommended for rat control in uh, coconut ecosystem because it is odorless. You mix in any kind of bait, the rat cannot assess, the rat cannot assess the chemical. So it's yellowish white powder. It is white antagonist. You can get in the market the trade names of Mosh Mosh, Bromad, you know, uh, all these you can get. So. And next is non anticoagulant uh, rodenticides. This is zinc phosphate. This is, this is age old, a very old uh, molecule. This is found in very blackish color. And these, uh, again, you have to keep in multiple dose. You cannot keep in single dose. It again smells very bad. So, fumigants, uh, aluminum phosphides, this is not recommended in coconut ecosystem, but you know, they're using in gadowns. Gadowns and other places where aluminum phosphide is used, where they're stored. So as I said, baiting, you know, baiting number one, I said about the crown baiting. So you make this bait, you take this bromodalan powder, or you mix in a bait, or you can take this wax gloss, you take it right to the place of the crown. Because once you know this, you see the nuts are falling down uh, with all the holes, then you can assess that rats are present there and rats are causing a lot of damage. So you cannot, suppose uh, you cannot control, if you're not able to control the rats at the base level, the best option is take these baits on the top of the crown and place them, okay? And then continuously you have to check, you have to repeat the process every month. So take a bait, put on the crown region, and you mention every, uh, and you monitor every once in a month, okay? Next, ground baiting. So in ground baiting, you can use a lot of uh, uh, PVC material on or you can use the coconut itself. You can use the coconut itself because they are easily uh, uh, habituated to go inside the coconuts. You can keep the bait. So, so you can use the bait, uh, bromodalan bait, keep inside this particular fallen coconuts. So these rats, they, they like burrowing. See, the, the rat, uh, they have a, a habit of burrowing or they want to move inside. Uh, it could be pipe or it could be a pot or it could be a PVC material. So they like burrowing inside. So you keep the, uh, and you have to keep the foot material in a very secretive place. So bait should be kept in a very secretive place, not in open areas. So you suppose you, you throw the foot material like that, you know, they won't come and eat you. Okay. Suppose you, you spill some beans or you spill something. So they are not that open eating in the daytime. So what you have to do is you have to prepare a bait and you have to put them in the coconut just in and around the coconut plant base. So this is called as 
for ground breathing. So one I told about the ground breathing. Second thing is ground breathing. So these are the various weights you can keep. Uh, you can use a bamboo. You can see you can use a bamboo here. You can use a pot. Okay, you can use even equipment at uh, 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 shelves also. So last is uh, in biological control. I want to say is use of predators. Okay, so cats. So cats are one good uh, option. What I told you. Uh, naturally, you'll be you'll be having uh, eagles or owls or snakes or mongoose. So what we can rear or what we can domesticate is dogs and cats. Okay, or birds also we can domesticate to control them. So this is uh, uh, what I have to say. Uh, with respect to the rodent management. So I want you to take a note of all this. You might have written or you might take some uh, screenshots, well and good, fine. So I, I want you to take much deeper thought on what is called as an IPM approach or area-wide management approach. So why? Because you cannot, you can never control rats okay, on isolation. Suppose uh, you have 100 acres in a village, uh, only one gentleman wants to kill rats in his own uh, uh, plot, then it could be controlled, say, like in a month, but again, they can come back. They can again come back. So, so, so this number one rats management is the food. You have to cut short all the food source, you have to cut short all the, uh, reduce all the arborages, you must put on the barriers, you must do repellents. And if possible, you can go for hunting or trapping or killing, or you can use baits. You can use baits, both antibodies, or the crocodile is the best. Then uh, you can raise some um, predators or, or using the productive inhibitors in the last because it's not available so far in India, in the aspects of coconut. But I advise you to uh, study more on this, and you can get much uh, advanced information on the internet. Or journals, and you can go down. So the time is open for uh, discussions. So I'll, I'll stop my share now. So we still have ten minutes time. So Participants, they can ask questions now by unmuting yourself. If you have any uh, question to be asked, you can unmute yourself, and uh, you can ask. Good evening, sir. You can you can ask a uh, silly question, no problem. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Uh, sir, can we use any sticky traps uh, because, uh, on the trunk instead of metal sheet uh, so that we can prevent both rodents and also the uh, mealy bugs, the uh, grease uh, coated sheets? Can we use them as sticky substances? Yeah, actually, the, the yellow sticky traps that we use for. Uh, Yellow, yellow sticky trap that we use for white flies, that is usually a paper material, a paper sheet. Okay. Uh, so this paper cannot be used for rats because rats, the, they are very uh, wild animals. Okay. So they can simply tear down and they can go. So instead, what I can suggest is you can take one metal itself. Okay. You can have a metal and you can put a adhesive on that. You can even put a glue on the metal itself. So I don't recommend a paper-based uh, uh, sticky trap. You got my point, one percent. Yes, yes. Yeah, paper-based sticky trap doesn't work out, but uh, the metal base will work out because metal is stronger. The one thing is it cannot uh, climb forward because the, the claws will not fit there. But even even if it, tr it tries to move, then it gets stuck there. It gets stuck. So the paper base doesn't work because the claws will tear down, right? Yeah. Next. Yeah, Sandeep raised hand. We still have uh, seven minutes. You can ask questions. Some questions are in chat box, sir. No, yes. no, I will check. I will check. Thank you. 
Let us know if it contains one small box. Anybody can speak till I check the uh, chat box. Because all are giving their names in the chat box. Names and addresses. So, so any question is accepted. We appreciate questions. Madam, I can't see any question. Okay, sir. If there are no questions, means everything was understood. <laughs> so, yes. uh, so any, any, anybody can speak uh, whether they liked or didn't like this particular uh, talk. Yeah, participants can give their opinion, feedback, yeah. live feedback. Live feedback. <laughs> because I prepared my talk only for 40 minutes so that I can spend time on questions. Mm. So I don't see any questions. Uh, it's all about the names. Madam, in YouTube, no, no questions? Uh, no, ma'am. No questions were posted in YouTube also. So if they are not asking, can I ask a question to students? <laughs> you can, sir. Let us see how many will answer. OK. Uh, so my, my question is the difference between rat and a mice. Can anybody speak? Rat and a mice. Or you can post in the chat box if you can't. Okay. Okay. I'll post. This and no, sir, I'm I'm talking. telling to participants to oh, post their okay. answers in the chat box. <laughs> All right. How do you differentiate a rat and a mice in terms of size, shape, or habitat? How do you know this is rat and this is a mice? This is a basic question. I think this is uh, something like fifth standard or fourth standard question. <laughs> rat and a mice. Okay. See, in Tom and, Tom and Jerry, that's a rat or a mice. In Tom and Jerry cartoon, I think nobody is listening or they don't want to interact. Someone is asking which fumigants are commonly used in burrows, sir. Just not okay, okay, okay. Okay, see, in generally, in most of the rat fumigants, we don't, they don't use uh, uh, basically the chemical. They just put on a straw. It, it just is smoke. It's a smoke generator, basically. You don't have to put uh, the fumigants like aluminum phosphide or methyl bromide. It is just a straw base. They'll, they'll take a straw, a dried straw, and they'll generate a smoke. That's it. Clear? Yeah. Because any pesticide you take, they, they will just uh, degenerate in the uh, heat. But sometimes people, you know, they, they, they put this uh, bromodilon be before using this fume again. They, they put the bromodilon baits in the burrows it itself. So I said about the ground baiting and the ground baiting. So in the ground baiting, they will pick up all these particular uh, uh, baits. And they'll put this particular bait and they'll close. They will close this particular uh, burrow with a mud or, or, or you can, they'll also use this particular uh, uh, white cement. Clear? And they'll put a stone. So after some time, uh, after some time, they'll again put this smoke to, to either to bring them out or they'll die because of asphyxiation or, or, they'll, or their lungs are choked up. That's it. That's a good question. So only once to one participant uh, answered your question, sir. Rat uh, ah. will have larger ears and tail than its body. Okay, that is roof rat. Okay, then mouse. <laughs> they gave half of half answer only, only half marks. <laughs> <laughs> mouse is smaller, and mouse will be staying only inside a house. Okay, mouse are smaller. They stay inside a house. They don't climb trees. Uh, and they don't uh, damage much. Okay, mouse are damaging in the houses. So as I said, you know, the, the car uh, damage or.
brain damage or the short circuits in urban sectors the major damage is caused by the mouth they are smaller they they will damage the uh, uh, ice bags or they are damaging the uh, gudowns and the warehousing operations but most of house rats but mouse are smaller tom and jerry lo chusnanta mouse okay house mouse mus musculus it's not bandicoot bangalensis bandicoot bangalensis you see in dirty areas in sewages in railway station you you find all dirty places like shopping malls and in, in the back back area of shopping malls the back area of the hotels you know bad the uh, uh, garbage is not picked up properly so bandicoot bangalensis is a big problem in rice ecosystem and all but in coconuts they don't climb as much as roof rat okay so as i told you some some rats are damaging the roots as well so these roots are uh, seedlings are damaged by uh, damaged by uh, uh, bandicoot bangalensis sir will you kindly enlighten the mode of action of colchicine and preventive yeah somebody said oh that's a different subject and we'll talk uh, one more time about <laughs> uh, how uh, to manipulate the reproductive system but all you have to know is apart from all these some countries they are using all these inhibitors reproduction reproductive inhibitors also okay so thank you so much madam i think we are sir uh, sir thank you so much sir for delivering a nice and informative lecture on vertebrate pests and their management in coconut i hope all the participants have noted uh, whatever information you have provided um, and uh, however participants don't worry about uh, material we will provide uh, all the notes for every lecture uh, maybe in the middle or at the end of the uh, course so sir thank you so much once again sir thank you madam so any questions are there they can uh, definitely uh, we will forward it to you sir through mail right. okay. if any question is there we will forward it to you okay bye everybody students thank you thank you participants thank you sir